Pixavert now offers a range of courses in generative AI, including a beginner's guide to stable diffusion and other courses in generative AI, including SDXL and Comfy UI. If you're interested, use the link in the description to enroll and get started on a new direction. Now, hopefully you guys are aware of techniques that we can use for creating images like this here, where we take a mask and bring the mask in and then use stable diffusion to create an image inside of the mask. Now, I've done several videos covering this. What I want to do now is to move on to the next stage, which is going one step further and using some of the capabilities inside of stable diffusion to actually identify items and to replace them just using artificial intelligence. Now we should be able to do that. We can do that. Let's see how to do that. We start off by going to manager and I'm going to look for a custom node. We're going to call it clip. We'll call it clip seg because that's what it's called. And we have one here, number 11, Bigert clip seg. We'll install this guy here. And once we're done, I'll come back and show you how everything works. Now, if all goes as planned, you should be able to open up the workflow in Comfy UI as follows and able to edit it without any, well, to start editing without any difficulties. Now, the to be absolutely certain, the uh, custom node that we're installing is the Comfy UI clip seg. Now, this guy here should work. And I find, find that with the older version of Comfy UI, it does work, but with the newer version of Comfy UI, you may run into problems. And in that situation, um, what I found was that installing Comfy UI Mixlab nodes, which is presented in the manager as a conflict, installing it nonetheless may work in terms of getting everything to work as it should. Now, this is a project which does a lot more than we actually need. All we are using it for is to activate the installation of ClipSeg in Comfy UI. So for whatever reason, the latest version of Comfy UI does seem to need this. And if you install that, you should find everything working fine. If not, I can't really advise on that because uh, I'm not sure exactly what the error is that's happening with the latest version of Comfy UI and ClipSeg. But I'll show you how to work it and hopefully any bugs will get fixed in due course. Now, what we'll do here is take a look at the project or the workflow that I'm going to present to you so that you can actually get things done. Uh, what we have is a number of masks which are called segmentation masks. And ClipSec essentially has two functions. One is to, uh, the, the clip section of it is, it identifies text. So we have a ClipSec node here, which identifies the text woman. It understands what that is. And the, the, the seg is this ability here. It's the ability to segment the image into words that ClipSeg actually understands. It's a really powerful ability. So let me work through, let me just show you the, the, the entire workflow. It is a fairly complex and um, initially you'll probably find this to be a somewhat daunting workflow, but it's actually doing very uh, simple things and repeating them over and over again. We are going to upload an image and that's done in the load, the load image node. Uh, this is a standard load image node. We have a load checkpoint and then we take the, let me just go and change this so that we actually can see what's happening a little bit easier. There we are. So we have the load image giving to a VAE encode for, for in painting. This is something many of you will be very familiar with if you've watched some of my other videos. Now the pixels are coming in from the original image. We've got a VAE coming in from whatever model we're using, and you can choose any one of a number of different models, some of which are better suited for this type of work than others. And then we have the clip going up to the uh, the text here. We haven't got any text in the, in the positive, just by uh, standard. Uh, let's just change the colors here to colors that I prefer. So I'll guide you as to what sort of text to put in the positive a little later. We have this uh, VAE encode for in painting, which has got a grow mask by number, which I'm just going to increase to five, just, just for the example. Then we have a K sampler. Notice that the denoise is set to 0 0.8, which is probably a good idea. And then we output the image, which is this guy here. Now, at the moment, it's outputting something that looks a little bit like an anime girl, uh, which is the tendency with some of these models when you don't have anything in the prompt. 
and I have no idea what's happening there. But the segmentation, the clip seg is doing some very important work before that. So this is actually the starting point and then the clip seg links through in a very specific manner. We've got two very complete clip seg sections here. Uh, the segmentation mask here is selecting woman and uh, you can change that text. You can change the other settings as well if you want to. The blur setting is obviously blur and you can see the blur happening there. The threshold is a, a guide as to where exactly to identify the, 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 the object, in this case woman. So changing that will change the structure of the mask that's created as well as changing blur. Dilation is a term that we use to relate to basically if you see the mask here as, as, as white for positive and black for negative, dilation will increase the white. It will expand the white a little bit. And that's a general term that's used in this type of graphics work to describe increasing the size of a mask. And the masks here are obviously black unselected, white selected. Uh, we have here uh, another clip seg which is fully functional. It's outputting a heat map, which is here the sky. It's identified the sky. And you can see here it's kind of not choosing the woman and it's trying not to choose the truck as well. Uh, in the heat map, we have a black and white map, which is a little bit less clear what's happening because we can't see the detail. But then we take the masks and we put them in a combined uh, seg masks. Now, this is the, the basically the two functions of this particular custom node. It creates clip segs and then uh, these segmentation masks are then combined using this guy here. Now, the, the combined seg masks, that is purely optional. You can choose to use one of these guys here and just one of those guys and it should produce a result. So we are creating a complex mask using combined seg masks. I've got a third clip seg here, which as you can see is not outputting heat mask or uh, black and white mask. And this guy is identifying the truck. So we're identifying woman, truck and sky. And feel free to play around with these settings to see what sort of results you get. Now, I generally find, I have to be honest, combining masks makes things a little bit more difficult. And you might be able to see over here some of the difficulties that we get into uh, with some of these images here where uh, sometimes it doesn't work perfectly, but we'll see what we get when we try this. Part of the difficulty is that the, the, the software has to decide when it does the case sampler, what exactly goes where. So I'm going to put in woman and we'll put in beautiful woman just, just because. And we'll put in shorts and t-shirt. Maybe we'll put in car, luxury car. What about a luxury car? And we'll put in uh, overcast sky and lightning. Now the lightning is something you might be able to see in some of the earlier images that I have on the left hand side there. Did I spell that correctly? No, I didn't. There we are. Now what we're going to do is to run that and see what happens. We've got pretty standard uh, sam sampler settings. Let's cue that and see what happens. And the result here is something which is kind of interesting. We've got the luxury car where we would expect it. We've got the woman and she doesn't look quite perfect. We also have the overcast sky. Do we have overcast sky with brilliant lightning? Let's try intense lightning. Now this will possibly work. We're not going to change the uh, the seed. A lot of the work being done here is going to be the seed is going to be the model. It's going to also be the prompt, the seed prompt model that has a huge impact uh, on the results you get. Let's increase, let's change the seed. Hmm. You can see the general outcome here. Sometimes it's kind of, dil because we're using dilation, the, the, the dilation, not the dilation, the grow mask, and also the, the dilation, it's expanding outside of the area that has been identified here. So we could reduce the grow mask, we could maybe reduce the dilation, 
I won't. Let's just see what, what happens when we change the grow mask option. So not very much. Let me just change the link render mode to straight. And we'll go ahead and work maybe with the dilation factor. Let's change that to five, five and over here to five. So we're getting a result with the car there. The car looks realistic. I'll say the shadow is maybe a little bit too intense. What it's doing with the with the woman here, it's putting her in what looks like socks, but in reality, it's kind of getting confused a little bit. The, the mask for the woman is not very good. And we can see the mask over there. It's just not representative of what the woman actually looks like. So we could try to play around with things or we could try a different way of actually masking this image uh, or masking the woman. But you can see here the strengths, the weaknesses of the technique. One of the things you definitely want to do is to play around with the denoise. 0.6, what will that do? So changing the denoise has a significant impact. In this particular case, it, it gets the image looking a little bit, I would say, closer to the original. But uh, what I would say here is that the mask for, for the woman is getting confused with the way she's standing. It doesn't quite understand what's happening with her arm. And that happens sometimes. So sometimes what you want to do is to work with each uh, individual object uh, individually. Uh, rather than trying to combine them in, in, in a complex mass like this. I am making a mistake up here. I thought I collect, c c corrected a mistake. I didn't. What happened was that I misspelled the word lightning. Now, let's see if it actually does produce some intense lightning. It certainly does. And stable diffusion being stable diffusion, it puts a little bit of a lightning stroke on, on, on the woman's um, T-shirt there as well. So we've got some really nice lightning. We can probably make things a little bit more intense by increasing the denoise. And um, let's see what that happens when we do that. Awesome, awesome. So you can see the general idea. Now, I could also try to change the luxury car to a truck. Oh, that's nice. So you can see this is a powerful technique. When you've got the masking done just right, it can produce a really nice result. And one of the things to bear in mind is that we could use this technique, um, try to find the right model. We could try to use the images created by AI, where perhaps you need to fix the, the fingers or the face. You could just say face instead of woman. and we change the prompt to beautiful face. And let's see what happens there. We should get a slightly different result where the mask is a little bit different. Okay, I'm not liking that very much at all. So the mask that we're getting here is a little bit too intense. Let's reduce the size of the mask. Uh, we can try to reduce the blur as well, maybe a bit more than that. change that to head and uh, change the prompt. Beautiful head, beautiful woman. So we're using the heat map to tell exactly where the mask is inside of the image. We're using this guy here to look at the overall structure of the mask. And uh, we're looking at the results, deciding if that's what <laughs> If that's what we want, or if that's not what we want. So you can see there's a bit of playing around to do. And the other thing I would say is that we also need to think really about um, changing the way that things are structured in terms of the, uh, the, the individual masks. So we could, for instance, get rid of this third mask and then remove luxury truck. And this should produce a somewhat easier render. So hopefully you're beginning to get an idea of just how powerful this technique is. Uh, certainly for things like faces, hands, where things have gone a little bit awry, 
the, the resolution is going to be important. If you're working with high resolution images, it probably will find it a little bit easier to make the edits. Here you can see we haven't got enough detail there to really uh, satisfy the, you know, it's looking a little bit worse than it was before. But uh, where you've got the right image, the right settings, the right uh, prompts, the right seed, the right uh, model, you can get decent results in terms of editing things this way. Uh, but what you want to do, generally speaking, is not to have it, the, the fewer things that are going into the mask, um, you can actually, instead of having a combined mask, you could just run, let's say, change this to woman. No, let's do it a little bit differently. Let's erase the sky. So what we could do is just link the mask from here. Uh, and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit to here. And that should give us a single sky replacement. So we could say, let's get rid of that, all of that stuff there. And this will demonstrate another limitation. Brilliant sunset. And let's see what that does. Now, what we're working with here is clearly, obviously the mask needs to be worked on a little bit, but what you're seeing here is a situation where the sky just doesn't match the sort of grass. It doesn't look like a brilliant sunset situation. So this is a little bit different from the kind of situation in Photoshop and other software where you can replace the sky effectively. Here, you would need to do quite a bit more editing to make the sky, what they call the color temperature of the image, be consistent. But you can see hopefully the potential that we've got here for uh, radical editing of an image or even very specific editing of uh, an output from an earlier AI render where something hasn't gone quite right. Okay. Okay.